There are different schools of thought when it comes to teaching children about race. One Atlantic City, New Jersey teacher says it's as simple as opening a book. So, a world of families. Families around the world come in all sizes and combinations. So wanting to share her list of multicultural books, Brittany Smith took to social media, posted book covers of some of her favorites. Well, that post, it got a whole lot of attention. It went viral. She joins us this morning to tell us more. So good morning to you, Brittany. Thank good you for joining morning. us. And when you posted the picture of your books, yes, uh, when you posted the picture of books, uh, did you imagine that you'd get such a response from this? Not at all. You know, when I first tweeted it, I had about 300 followers and I thought maybe a few out of my 300 followers would appreciate it and share it. And it just has blown up. I'm at over, I've gained 6,000 followers. It's at 400,000 likes. It's been such a whirlwind. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's powerful, you know, because I think so many teachers are looking right now for ways to teach their little ones. So tell us about the books that you recommended, why you chose some of these specific titles. Well, some of the books that I mentioned are books that I have in my own classroom, and I know for a fact that my children, my pre-K children, love. Um, others are just books that I've stumbled upon through my own research. You know, I wanted to make sure that when I created this thread that it showed a variety of um, books, of people, because, you know, I wanted for people to see that regardless of who they were. So it was just so important to me to provide a variety for people. Yeah. And look, you know, literature like this, this is a way to bring it to such a young, a young audience, right? So for you, tell me about the, how the preschoolers absorb it, right? Because you were teaching this and these, and, and, and these books way before what's going on now, before George Floyd and before a pandemic. So how have they absorbed it? You know, so my students are four and five years old. Um, I think there's a lot of assumption that it's too early to talk about race or to talk about diversity in that sense. And it's really not because children are absorbing so much, so regularly, so often. Right. Um, so basically with my students, we read books, we talk about the characters, um, we discuss what we see in the pictures, and that's a lot of times a big focus is with the picture books as we look at the images and you know what do their faces look like what sort of emotions are we seeing and that's such an important key with preschool is getting them in tune with their emotions and for them to be able to verbalize right. those different emotions and we do that through books and we also show them diversity through books as well and you know and you've been teaching remotely now because of the pandemic for for more than two months right i mean how has Correct. that been going and and what are some of the challenges you face when teaching pre-k students via a virtual platform yeah you know it has definitely been an adjustment um you know i have a great school district in atlantic city that i work for and they've been very helpful as much as they can be um one of the things that i've done like you guys have shown on your uh site is that I do YouTube videos for my students and to kind of make mm -hmm. it a little more comfortable for them. Um, there's been so many changes. So what I do is I bring books home or I use the books that I have at home and I'll read it on my YouTube video or my YouTube channel and I'll send it to them via our app that we use to communicate together. And we just communicate through that Monday through Friday and I'll send them activities to do, videos of myself and we try to keep some sense of normalcy despite everything. It's been, it's been a challenge, but you know, I'm so glad that I'm still able to communicate with them. It has certainly been a challenge. Brittany Smith, I appreciate what you're doing. I appreciate that you actually put that list of books out there for so many other teachers who look to you for that advice. I think it's pretty powerful that it got retweeted that many times. It shows you the importance that people are listening, right? Exactly. And I have to say, too, a lot of people have reached out to me since then saying that majority of the books are sold out or that the prices have gone way up. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's insane to see. It's insane to see for sure. Yeah. Knowledge is power. Uh, are you near Cape May by any chance? I'm near Atlantic City. So about an hour from okay. Cape May. Kate May, when things redo, I always like to give people recommendations of where to eat. There's a little restaurant called Luisa's. If you ever need a place to go, right? It's a great restaurant in Cape May. Um, and when things go back to normal, you know, treat yourself as a reward for helping so many teachers out.
Oh, uh, definitely. We'll have to check it out. I've never heard of it. I'll definitely have to go. <laughs> Thanks for that. Brittany, Brittany Smith, appreciate it. I appreciate your time this morning. I love your energy and what you're doing for the future uh, of, our, of our country, really. That they are the future, those preschoolers.